suppose a, a mainstay, a classic trait of a lot of horror films is the mad scientist. And you have to be very careful, I guess, on how you play that and how you pitch something like that. How do you go about, I mean, there, there are a lot of mad scientist movies. Yeah. Is it something that has been a big influence? You're really aware of the kind of the archetype? Yeah, I'm aware of the archetypes, of course, the Frankenstein and stuff. But when I was writing the script, I was ne never thinking about those uh, movie icons. I was more thinking about the notorious uh, uh, Nazi doctors like uh, Joseph uh, Mengele and all the, uh, the others. And they created some real horrors, of course. So that was uh, the horror for me when I wrote the script. I never thought about other horror films, uh, horror villains, famous. Do you think of that as a kind of backstory as well for your character? Do you think of in terms of the Joseph Mengele and... Oh, yeah. I <coughs> These mass murderers are the generation of my father's generation. And uh, like a child whose father's in jail as a murderer, you carry all your life that good feeling and the Bible says the goat is going from the fathers into the fourth generation. And then sitting in my kitchen, I thought, oh, great. Now we are in the fourth generation after World War II. And now we can start to kick this imbecile idiots in the boards <laughs> as hard as possible, <laughs> making the jokes about them, have fun to show how stupid and how idiotic they were. And it's unbelievable nowadays to think that the whole nation was schizophrenic, schizophrenic behind these idiots like Dr. Heiter. And uh, even though it's in a cartoonish way too, because we want to entertain you, the surface has to be just horror flick entertainment. But beneath that surface, there's a lot of stuff which makes the film very rich. It's loaded up with uh, a lot of sophisticated thoughts of Tom. Me, myself, I, it took me a while to discover the different levels and the richness of the script. And, but he is such a visionary guy. He is so talented to convey his vision to the actors. And you feel so comfortable to work with him that it's just pure joy and pleasure to work with them. Talking about working with you, um, how, do you, I mean, obviously when you pitched the funds, you didn't go straight for the cast of stuff, but um, to the cast, to the guys that have to be in that position, how did you approach right. that and how did you audition? Oh, that's, that's a <laughs> story itself, yeah. We went to uh, New York to, uh, to cast uh, the two beautiful uh, actresses you saw, but you can imagine uh, we, we, uh, we pitched there for uh, a controversial European movie, so a lot of uh, beautiful actresses came in, and I showed them pictures where I, uh, drawings I made from the human centipede construction, <laughs> and they were looking at it, and so many girls, they were so angry with me, <laughs> and, and, and a nutcase, it's incredible, because most of the actresses only want to be pretty, and I ask them to be attached to an asshole, so you can, <laughs> can imagine that, uh, that fact, but the smart ones stayed, because I really explained them how it would look like, and uh, yeah, we then we had to put the actresses on, also and actresses on their hands and knees, and some of them couldn't be close to an ass in front of them. And at the end, we chose the the actresses with the most balls, Ashley and, and Ashley. They did a great job, I think. They really, do, they really do do a great job. But it also looks like it's physically a very painful and, uh, to to endure. I mean, how many weeks were they in that position? Yeah, uh, like like a short four weeks. And uh, half of the shoot, they were on their hands and knees. So we gave them a massage every night to pamper them a little bit because it was hard. It's uh, and you can imagine Dr. Heiter running around when you're naked on your hands and knees. Crazy. Yeah. And it, is, this, Dita, is it true as well that you stayed in character throughout the shoot? Sure. <laughs> I went up in the morning, four o'clock having at least one hour jog to get oxygen in my little brain, in my drug factory between my shoulders, uh, to get a lot out of the limb, and then in good mood, I drove to the set and I kept separated. And we have a wonderful producer, which is Ilona Six, the sister of Tom. She is a very skilled and wonderful producer and she understands what acting is about. So I said to her, 
I want to be separated. I want to be alone. I want to be a, an own car. I want to uh, come close to the centipede actors because I'm an art guy. They are just insects. They are subhuman beings and uh, I can do with them whatever I want, so I don't want to know them privately and to have small talk and be nice. I came in and I looked at them and they were even privately a little bit afraid and that helped a lot. <laughs> and uh, afterwards we became friends for sure, but uh, they, they admitted that it helped them a lot to uh, always watch out there's the actual teacher coming. Oh, oh. And soon he will mutate into, into worse. And uh, therefore, yes, I, I kept the whole day on my track. And uh, at, in the evening, I slept uh, sound sleep. <laughs> I have to ask this, and I don't mean to be, to be rude, but how was it that you, for you, directing Dr. Dr. Hydra and not directing a, a nice, mild-mannered actor, but a man who's a character or something yep. very hard That's, that's the, the biggest gift you can get as a director, if an actor is that passionate and brings his own a amazing wardrobe, because Dieter uh, uh, brought the beautiful suits and the great Nazi coat himself, so, and, and as a director, you, you, yeah, you, 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 you tell him what to do and he gives you a performance, which, yeah, you can never say anything about, it's amazing, so, I had a very uh, easy job directing Dieter. He gave, I think, one of the most uh, incredible performances ever. But what a director oh, no. who, <laughs> who precisely knows what he wants to do. He gives you a, a, a precise swimming pool to swim in. And in between that pool, he gives you freedom. He gives you space. And he's generous to you. So that you feel so comfortable that you make offers that you can be do some spontaneous little things like licking up the blood on the stairs. When I came up, I suddenly saw the blood from the centipede what was yeah. shot before. And I thought, why not licking it up? Because I'm losing blood already on my feet. So I licked it, and Tom loved it. And uh, you won't do that with a director you don't feel comfortable with. So I'm assuming then that this is also the beginning of a, and I hope it is as well, the beginning of a very fruitful relationship between you as actor and director. You oh, bet. Yeah. You yeah. bet. <laughs> Herzog and Kinski, yeah? Maybe Laser and Six one day? <laughs> Laser and Six is a fantastically cool yeah. sounding Yeah, yeah. Laser and Six. Um, was it uh, quite grueling for you as well as the director? It's your first horror film, and then you've created something very physically challenging for your, yeah. for your cast. Yeah. Um, and, it's, and it's hard work as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Did you find it grueling? Were there any particular moments in the film that were particularly difficult to film? Um, not difficult, no. When I wrote the script, I knew it was going to be uh, controversial, of course. But for me, that's what uh, all the fun is about. Because I love it when people say, ah, what the hell is this? And, and uh, uh, have discussions about it after after they've seen a movie. I hate it when uh, when you see a movie and you ask yourself what's for dinner and forget the movie about uh, immediately. And this is like uh, something different. And that's for me where the fun uh, fun is. So all the scenes yes, you see in the film, I'm uh, yeah really dedicated about. And uh, the the guy going to the bathroom is of course the the highlight. I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.